Given the market today, even finding a graphics card is damn near impossible. But is there one type of purchase you can make that gets you everything you need to get a hold of? This right here is a HP NV23, an all-in-one computer I saved from the bin, but also a surprisingly affordable PC. Still, less about how I got this computer, because we can touch more on that later, and more about the frankly impressive specifications you can get with these all-in-one computers. This PC contains a Haswell Core i5-4460T, which although is old, isn't actually much worse than the latest releases when you compare them clock for clock. 8GB of 1600MHz DDR3 is included, at about standard for the era, but most interestingly about this laptop, laptop all-in-one, is the graphics card, an NVIDIA GeForce 830A, which is a sort of cut-down 940M or MX laptop chip, but then clocked higher to make up for the deficit of where they've cut it down. It's a really strange card, meaning it's sort of like a little powerhouse that only really uses 20 watts in real-world scenarios. Other than that, you get decent speakers, a 1080p screen, and it's always going to be a decent price, at least while these things are under the radar. See, this unit in particular was overheating due to a common HP trait, not like we didn't see last week's video where this also happened, where the thermal paste has become dried up and useless, as well as a buildup of dust, and it all just ends up leading to a PC that overheats. Once these were replaced, and the dying 1TB hard disk drive was replaced with an SSD, we were golden. The previous owner had been misdiagnosed with what the issues were, and actually some guy spent about two hours looking at it and just ran C cleaner and let it overheat and said the problem was solved, which allowed me to buy the machine for a tenner because he was sick of it and wanted to get rid of it. Given that virtually all all-in-one PCs from this era have a service hatch, it actually made upgrades and maintenance a breeze. I think I spent 30 minutes cleaning it up and sorting out this machine before it was ready to go. Now, onto the PC itself. A convenient aspect of the system is that it only needs to be plugged in, leaving you with a frankly clean and cozy setup. Next to a beige Pentium 4 PC, this is genuinely my second favorite type of setup I could have. No worry of wires or any nonsense like that, and you keep the rest of the setup quite practical. It lets you keep things as you need them. Which for me, as I'm sat here on this very PC drinking a cup of tea and typing up this script and then actually editing it all up together, well, it gives you another perspective on what a PC can be. Usually something I rarely touch on, because most of the time I'm more focused on the budget, but I never thought I'd see the day where an all-in-one PC is all you can get a hold of that could possibly be good budget. You have to take the wins where they are. What this PC does lack any upgradability, as it were, you do gain in form factor. Not that you'd actually be able to get any parts to upgrade this thing if it was actually upgradable. Now, for one thing that I actually really liked about this PC was the graphics card. And you have the HD4600 integrated onto the Intel chip, and that's more for desktop use, video encoding with QuickSync, and other various tasks. And it does leave that rather interesting NVIDIA GeForce 830A to power its way through applications. Now, from all the research I've done, this unit is very literally a cut-down GeForce 940 M or MX. One of the two. I think MX because that was the most powerful version, so it makes sense that most are derivatives from there. It's based on the Maxwell architecture, it gets up-to-date video drivers, it even gets optimizations for titles, which is a key thing to look for on these all-in-ones, because when you're stuck with a graphics card, you want it to be supported. Which probably leads a lot of you to thinking, what is performance like? Well, I've installed the latest release of Windows 10, and the only real way to find out how this entire setup handles is in the benchmarks. Starting us off with Skyrim, which I thought would be something the machine wouldn't handle all too well, given that it's essentially got an OEM version of a laptop graphics card. However, even this little power-sipping unit saw the game run really well in 1080p with a mixture of medium and high settings. With some tweaks to the resolution though, you could probably see a very fluent 60fps at all times. However, I wanted to make sure the game still looked kind of nice, because it does have a really nice screen on this computer. Another surprisingly new and rather intensive game is Civ 6, especially running in 1080p with even lower settings. I made sure to get a good way into the game to see just how well the late game would stress the machine, and the machine did remarkably well. 
Turns were loading with decent speed well into the mid-game, although the late game could prove a bit challenging on all the components of the machine. I'm really surprised, Civ 6 runs really well on this little all-in-one. CSGO proved to be another such distraction with how well it ran on the machine and how long I spent benchmarking it. Although this time 1080p was just a little bit too much, as that is how I originally benchmarked this machine. However, with competitive settings and a HD resolution still, we saw frame rates well in excess of 100 FPS a lot of the time. In competitive scenarios where you've got less people, this could even shoot well past 200 FPS. So very impressive stuff. Ramping up the intensity again with BeamNG, it was the first game to prove equally as taxing on the CPU as it was on our little 830A graphics chip, which has impressed me so far. Still, with the right settings found, which did turn most of the environments into a sort of mush rather than, you know, textured environments, the game remained really playable, with physics being deformed on even the most intensive of maps. Some of the less intensive ones would even run even better. However, you're mostly not going to have the best time with those newer titles unless you turn down the settings. Now where the machine really shines is the classics. See Half-Life 2 is running here maxed out leaving plenty of power in reserve, so if you want to leave a program rendering in the background, which I mostly did while I've been editing this video, the frame rate never really went below 100 FPS, and I don't doubt that older builds of the game, or maybe with a mixture of different settings rather than it maxed out, it would run even better. And then finally, Fable The Lost Chapters which only ever dropped a frame when the prompt came up, and that's got to do with the game running at 15Hz internally, which is a whole nother mess entirely and not up to this PC. That's something completely different. This was one of the smoothest and sleekest ways I have ever experienced the game, with no graphical glitches and an extremely consistent frame rate, all being displayed on an extremely nice IPS screen at its native resolution. So for the classic titles, it generally doesn't get better than playing on this PC. Mostly. General usage was also fantastic on the machine. Video encoding, decoding, you name it. Even editing. I've edited this entire video on this machine. I've typed the script up on this machine. And I can safely say it was a major upgrade over having to use that awful AMD A10 that was in last week's laptop video. I reckon this machine boots up in about three to five seconds. Applications launch almost immediately, wireless speed and range is far superior to many phones and laptops I've used, and even the speakers are pretty decent. Now, I've been multitasking on this machine a lot and actually putting it through its pace is quite hard. I've been treating this machine like I usually treat my 3700X Ryzen PC that I don't have access to. So I've been playing RimWorld while I wait for files to process. It never misses a beat. Although it's a few years out of date, I've had a brilliant week using this machine, chatting with my community, and generally just finding out the limits of what these all-in-ones can do. Something that 3D Mark mostly allowed me to do, which just showed that anything remotely new, the GPU definitely is the weakest area. However, for older and more classic titles from 2013 and prior, the GPU and CPU make for a surprisingly competent combination and equal pairing. Something I'd never expect from such a strange laptop-based graphics chip, or a computer that's made by HP and was responsible for last week's horrible laptop. Either way, I've been really impressed. So in conclusion, I really, really like this little all-in-one and will actually be keeping it, not for my own use, but for some family members. Prices for them seem to have stayed under the radar, so genuinely, if you're looking for a system right now just to do some basic gaming and use a computer, you can find models like this HP selling for under £75 in working condition, or cheaper if you buy them broken like I did, because chances are they're just overheating because of a common design flaw, and one that's not too much of an issue once you've repasted the system. It's an absolute bargain with today's prices. For less than the price of a graphics card, you get a really cosy system that's perfect to get work done on, boot up some classics, or even more recent AAA games while you get on with those tasks. All in all, I've actually had a really good time using this little system, and thank you very much for watching, and good night. If you enjoyed this video, thank you very much for watching, and do be sure to like and subscribe for more PC videos just like this.